Watch the Mysteries of Existence channel for divine enlightenment. To know more about yourself, the physical and subtle aspects of the universe, and the source of all that is. This is a message brought to you by the Harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Yazorma, author, Archbishop, University Chancellor, Scholar in Extraterrestrial Research, Professor of Christian Education at St. Thomas Abekic University, England, recipient of Nelson Mandela Excellent Leadership Award in Africa, former living Grand Master in the Order of Terrestrial and Astral Hierarchy, amongst others. Dear listeners, the topic of this exposition is, Mystery of Existence Come Daily Experiences in the Universal Scales of Judgments, Part 8. It is from the Advanced Divine Lecture Series of the Harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Uzorma, which he updated for this episode 39. I read this great message of the Harbinger as follows. Earth men, some of you may be aware of the admonition of Saint Paul, as recorded in the Bible book of Ephesians, chapter 4 verses 26 and 27, thus, Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Giving place to the devil mentioned here, is very important to the subject matter of this material. This has to do with allowing the basis for which your issue comes forth and determined in the astral courts of the forces of darkness. This should be avoided by all at all cost. It is extremely disadvantageous in the journey of life. Saint Paul said that one may be angry but should not sin in his anger. We should endeavor to subjugate anger, but if at all it comes, we should never entertain animosity, via the propensities of grudges. In the words of Saint Paul, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. This is extremely important in the divine terms of reality. For the sun to go down upon your wrath, shows that intense grudges have come into play, within your consciousness. It is extremely disadvantageous for anyone to go to bed in the night with grudges in his consciousness. The matter of such a person, in the astral courts of darkness, is highly accelerated and facilitated. In the first place, the individual involved in this entanglement, has debased himself to a mere farmland for the vicious astral entities. Now, you have heard it said that, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Equally, you have heard that the great Lord Jesus the Christ said, agree with thine adversary quickly. These two great admonitions are synonymous to each other. Both yield the same divine result. They show the urgency required for these things. Even the saying, be ye angry, which to us is normal in the human existence, when done, should equally be confessed to the Lord. This is to be on a safer ground in the divine spheres. Sometimes, a believer may say, Oh, I have no sin, but I ask, who told you that? Listen, every human being, including a believer, has faults which are sins at different levels. This is the truth of human existence. Thus, a believer still has faults or sins, but his sins are forgiven and covered by the Lord. In Romans chapter 4 verse 7, Saint Paul wrote, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. This is the inheritance of true believers in the Almighty God of creation, who are recognized by the Lord himself as his chosen ones on earth. Inherent in this faults or sins, however, isn't connected with the conscious participation in wickedness. In the journey of life, you must pay for your conscious participation in wickedness. There are certain things that we do, which we don't consider to be sins, but which are sins or faults within the human structures of being, as determined in the higher divine spheres. I will discuss some of these here. To say that you don't commit sin, shows that you are merely deceiving yourself in the journey of life. Do you truly know what is sin, in the higher divine spheres? Do you truly know how these things are recognized by the ultimate knower of righteousness? Now, do you know that certain things, which we do not consider to be sins, 
are sins in the higher divine spheres of reality? The Lord once said to me thus, Harbinger of the Last Covenant, whoever speaks a word, when I have not authorized him to speak, has failed before me. Again, whoever does not speak a word, when I authorized him to speak, has equally failed before me. Now, children of men, within this consideration of the Lord, have we not all failed? Do you truly know when to speak and when not to speak? Have we not sinned here? The only salvaging point in this connection is the reality that, iniquities can be forgiven and sins covered by the Eternal One, who is the All in All. Without that, we are nowhere. This is the more reason we must forgive others. If you fail to forgive others, your sins and iniquities will rise and smite you in the realms beyond. Those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered, are those who sincerely forgive others, those who don't count sins upon others. To such ones, the outcome of their spiritual court cases in the realms beyond, are always favorable to them. Furthermore, to those who hold that they do not commit sin, do you know how many ants that you have killed in your journey of life? Do you know how many little creatures that you have destroyed, while walking down the street or driving about with your vehicle? Yes, the ant is a little creature, but each ant is a certain degree of camouflage manifestation, possessing both consciousness and identity, arising from the universal body of the one eternal almighty God of creation. Thus, the movement of each ant, and the purpose thereof, are well known to the Almighty God of creation. Do you know how the spirit of one ant reports the earthman to the realms beyond, even unto the Almighty God of creation? What you don't know is bigger than you. The experience I had with one cockroach, about climbing my shoe in a certain place, is published in one of my books. As I was about to kill the cockroach, I heard the Lord telling me to stop what I was about to do. He told me to show mercy on that which is lesser than me, so that what is higher than me will equally show me mercy. Remember the word of the great Lord Jesus the Christ, which goes thus, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That is how things go in the journey of life, in the entire universal systems. Never you at any time claim to be righteous before the throne or claim to be holier than another person. Leave all such issues to the Almighty God of creation, but endeavor to be steadfast on the path of light. Don't deceive yourself, in the name of being a holiness preacher, by claiming to be righteous than your fellow earthmen. Rather, humble yourself and lie low before the holiest of the holies, the Almighty God of creation. St. John wrote to the believers of his time, as recorded in the Bible book of 1 John, chapter 1 verses 8 to 10, thus, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him our liar, and his word is not in us. This was a message to the believers in those days, this is a message to believers unto this day. The truth is that, we humans are all woeful sinners at different levels, before the Lord. No earthman, including the righteous earthmen on earth, including the harbinger of the last covenant, is exempted from this reality before the Lord. The Bible book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 verse 20, the NIV version, says, Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. This is the final verdict of the Holy Scriptures. That is why we have Christ as our Advocate, otherwise there wouldn't be any need for Him to operate as our Advocate, in the realms beyond. Consequently, as we are admonished by Saint Paul to be angry and sin not, we must be mentally and spiritually prepared for this. We must understand that people out there will act to make us angry. Even the household is not ruled out here. We must be ready to quickly reconcile with the adversary, lest we are dragged to a spiritual court. 
If the sun goes down in your anger, be sure that the issue concerned will appear before a judge in the realms beyond. But if you forgive, and you are forgiven, the matter will be dissolved before the Spirit of the Lord. When someone is practicing wickedness against you, and you sincerely forgive him, whether or not he asked for forgiveness, you have salvaged yourself from the danger of a court in the realms beyond. If the person involved also ask for your forgiveness, he stands equally salvaged. But for as long as the person didn't change and ask you for forgiveness, the matter will continue to go on the way, till it gets to the destination of a spiritual court against him. I hope you will understand these things, possibly better than I am trying to explain, because this is part of the reality of human existence. Many things are involved here, but don't forget that whoever holds another person down, also holds himself down. You hold someone down on the road, preventing him from going to a place, are you not equally holding yourself back from going elsewhere? In the Bible book of Matthew, chapter 5 verse 22, the great Lord Jesus the Christ also said, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Here, the Lord spoke of one being angry without a cause. Who determines the cause in this connection, unto divine validity? That cause is not determined by you, the earthman. If you are angry with someone, because he failed to freely give you some money or a loaf of bread, how valid is your anger in the divine terms? When the person involved doesn't even know that you desire a loaf of bread from him, but you put it in your mind and begin to bear grudges, are you angry with a valid cause? If it was money that you wanted from him, but you didn't work for it, and he didn't give you the money, for which you are angry, how divinely valid is your anger? In such instance, you may have determined in your consciousness, in your mental pattern, that there is a cause for your so-called anger, but in the divine spheres of reality, your anger is null and void, you are on your own. The anger in you, against anyone without a cause, immediately puts you in a danger of the judgment. This is the truth in all the divine spheres, it is equally the eternal verdict of the great Lord Jesus the Christ. No one should pass over it lightly. Consequently, unpleasant situations are bound to physically occur. Such unpleasant situations rises from the conclusions of the said judgment, in a court of the realms beyond. In the sayings of the Lord here, certain things are mentioned. For instance, judgment is mentioned, counsel is mentioned and hell is equally mentioned. All these are physically related to experiences of predicaments at different levels. Do you know that any iota of grudge you have in your mind, against anyone, puts you immediately in a danger of judgment? Whoever wants to be freed by the eternal spirit of the almighty God of creation, must first free others from his heart. This is regardless of what others have done to him. That is the divine order of the Lord. Whoever fails here, will fail in many things, and will battle with many unpleasant situations in the journey of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ also said that when you say, Raka, to your fellow man, you will be in danger of the council. Where is this council situated or located? This council is not physically oriented, rather it is located in the realms beyond. The word, Raka, means, empty-handed. It is a word of insult. Have you seen any court on the physical realm of earth that handles a matter related to this kind of insult? When you secretly insult your husband, wife or anyone in this manner, are you dragged to any earthly court? Maybe you are aware of such a court in the world of man, but I am yet to know about it. However, I am certain that such a court doesn't exist in the nation of my citizenship. Even if you have such a court in your nation of citizenship, what about those who don't have it? 
Does it mean that those who insult others in this manner spoken by the Lord, in some physical locations or environments wherein no one is prosecuted in a court for such, are therefore free? One may be free from the earthly courts, but what about the courts in the realms beyond? Now, when you call someone a fool, according to the Lord, it puts you in the danger of hell. The hell that you hear about here, is not necessarily meant to occur only after one dies, in the earthly terms. One can also have diverse hellish or hell-like experiences in the world of man. Earthman, I tell you, diverse unpleasant situations, diverse predicaments, acute health challenges and chronic diseases, acute poverty, amongst other hellish experiences, including untimely death, can occur to a person as a result of the decisions of spiritual courts. That will be all for now. A word is enough for the wise. Peace and blessings.